good afternoon, viewers. Welcome to another wonderful edition of your darling Christian talk show, Asians in Christendom. And we are coming to you live on Western Spring Television, channel 190 on Star Times. Uh, please also, you can connect with us and follow us on our social media handles uh, at Facebook, Instagram, and also on Twitter at Western Spring Television. You can also watch us live on our YouTube channel at Western Spring Television. I am your host, Pastor Steve Akinwumi, the presiding pastor of Daily Rema Christian Center, Oshogo. Uh, today we're looking at the topic, 21st century marriage. We want to find out what is the biblical prescription for a successful marriage. Also comparing the marriages of the olden days and the modern marriages, and then looking at the issues around our, our modern marriages, and then how do we prefer solutions to some of the problems that today's marriages are faced with. I have, by the grace of God today, two guests on the show today. I'd like to introduce to us um, Pastor Kayo De Ojo. He's a senior pastor of Riverside Christian Center, Oshobo. Pastor Ojo, much, good to have you on the show today. You're welcome. Thank you very much, sir. Thank your, you for having me. Your first time joining this conversation yes, sir. on issues in Christendom. Yes, and we are blessed to have you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. We also have um, a marriage counselor, also a relationship coach, coach the person of Mrs. Bomi Oyagwile. Good afternoon and welcome. Thank you so much, sir. Incidentally, she's um, our first female guest oh, on our TV show. Thank Today you, is about marriage. Mm. So it's good to have the two voices, the man's voice and the female voice, to be able to have a balanced view yes. of marriage. I want, us to, I want us to start on this note. Now, marriage is God's institution. Yes, sir. And the very first one that God created. Mm. A beautiful one to be able to raise family and society, you know, at large. They said that marriage is the nucleus of the society. As children of God, what has the Bible has to say about the factors that makes marriage successful? Let me start from the woman. Okay. <laughs> because I think marriage uh, is very important to women more yes. than men. Have you? Yes. So why is marriage even very important to women than men? Let me find out. Well, when you look at the life of a woman, okay, the system that is, um, you know, that is on ground, okay, for her maybe through the society, the church, okay, or whatever, there okay. can be even system, okay. Once a lady graduate from the university, okay, or whatever she or finish, or finish learning a trade, trade or something, the next thing is. You know, go and get married. Okay. Because in the life of a woman, time is a factor. Okay. A H is a factor. Okay. And you know, giving birth to children. Okay. So you can really not remove mm. marriage like that mm. from the mindset or the makeup of a woman. Okay. It's just in us. Okay. And it's how God created us. So we think about Okay. It. So every woman dreams of yeah. that day that she'll be married and have her own children. Yes. Okay, while the boys are out there hustling. Okay, the women are also hustling. The mother women are also hustling yes. out there. Okay, that, that's fantastic. So, what are the factors that make marriage successful? Hmm. Let me say number one. Why are you, why do you get married? Okay. For me, I would say because I know it's part of my, it's part of my existence, it's part of why God created me. Okay. Let me say it's part of it. Okay. So, so I wouldn't want to say because, so if I've gotten married, that means that's a destiny fulfilled. No. Mm. Okay. You understand? So I say it, one of the fact, you must know why you are getting married. Okay. And you must understand marriage is an institution. Okay. Every institution has rules and regulations. Okay. 
this institution that God has created, mm. and I am into it, just mm. like the university, okay. you must know the rules and regulation of the school. Mm. Even every lecturer has their rules. Okay. Once it's 8 a.m., you can't enter. Okay. Some lecturers will say, lock the door. All others will write their names, um, names or write their... Attack um, number. No, write the lecture okay, at, the, okay, at, okay, at the window. Okay, 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 okay. Because they have already, they've already known that it's 8 a.m. lecture okay, starts. Okay. So also, we as women, we in marriage, you must understand, in this marriage institution, mm. the master planner, mm. the man, the God who is to marry, mm. has rules and regulation. Okay. So just follow it. Okay. But we follow the rules and regulation. We have the manual. Okay. Marriage will be sweet. Okay. Marriage is not something that a government or uh, a culture institute mm. is God. Mm. So before you understand the factors of marriage, you must understand the person that, you know, the, the God that created the marriage. Okay. You must come to the mind, come to the mind of God. Okay. Through the Bible. Okay. To see this is the rules and regulation guiding this. So what are some of those rules? You must know, number one, you must know who is to tell the, the marriage. Okay. You must, you must know, know God. God. Okay. Okay. Then, through your knowledge of God, you must know what are the rules and regulations. Okay. And the major rule that was given to a woman mm -hmm. is wives. Submit to your husband. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as a woman, your submission is your currency. Okay. It's going to be like a currency you will use to transact. You know, mm -hmm. in, in Nigeria, our currency is uh, Naira. Uh, Naira. Naira. So in, in the, as, a, as a godly spiritual woman, okay. in quote, okay. you must be able to understand you can't just do anyhow. Mm -hmm. you'll, be, you'll be outside the cover. Mm. You, we have mm. rules and regulation. So, guys so submission, a, a woman's submission is our currency yes. for transaction, transaction. Yeah. in the business of marriage. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Pastor Ojo, <laughs> as a man, <laughs> and as a man of God, mm. and uh, as a man of God, you also get to cancel marriage. You also marriage, you also cancel people. Particularly, that's one of the major assignments of a pastor to ensure that families are built mm. up. Right. What do you have to say about the factors that makes marriage beautiful? Mm. Um, once again, thank you, sir, for having me. Mm. And um, I want to first say kudos to her for what she said just now. <laughs> now, why thank did you, I say sir. that? Because that point she raised mm. is a point that has become a contention today. Mm. Yeah, that submission. Point of submission. I think that's the major contention. Okay. Now, she said she started with let's know who instituted marriage. Okay. Now you are not the examiner. Mm. There is an examiner. That's right. You know, most times when I was writing jam, some of us called ourselves three hundred plus. Mm. But when the result came, we had two hundred <laughs> and something. <laughs> yes. So okay. that to still tell you that you are not the examiner. That's right. Uh -huh. mm. So in the context of marriage. You are not the examiner. God has the marking God scheme. has the marking, the marking scheme. scheme. Mm. So whatever opinion you are bringing outside his own mm. constitution is left to you. Mm. Do you understand me, sir? Okay. It's left to you. So now God says, now if we go back to the scripture, Ephesians 5 now. Okay. I think from 22 downwards, mm. or 23, mm. thereabout, Bible started with wives, submit yourself to your own husbands. Now, going downward, Bible says, husbands, love your wives as Christ. Now, I'm picking the word of to your own husband as unto the Lord, mm -hmm. and love your wives as Christ loved the church. That's right. That means the, um, how would I put it now, the perfect example to look at now in the context of marriage okay. is the Christ factor. Mm. Hmm. Christ and the church and the relationship. Church relationship. Okay. Not my pastor. Okay. Not what anybody is telling me. Not outside. culture. Not culture. Okay. What is Christ saying? And if we look at it very well, culture also supports what Christ is saying. Mm. Now, I've often told people, look at the relationship between Christ and the church. Okay. I've been a pastor for a couple less, of years. A couple of years. Mm. Um, more than a decade. Mm. Mm. Now, I know the way God relates with me. Okay. When God tells me to do something, mm -hmm. and I go outside of what he has told me to do, okay. I, there are consequences for every action. Mm -hmm. I pay the price. Mm -hmm. New things to yeah, love. Yeah. Bishop Oedipo said reaction. what time? He said, wherever God doesn't send you to, you pay your own transport fare to that place. That's right. So if that's the way God relates with the church, mm -hmm. why is marriage an exemption? Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm trying okay, to say? Okay, okay. Now, but the marriage we have today, we have made it transactional. 
in the yeah. sense that there are so many things we look at now that is outside what God wants for us. Okay. God has said, husbands, love your wives. Mm -hmm. He has said, wives, submit. Okay. My take is this. If each party understood their roles, okay. each party okay. understood their roles differently and, and played, played their well. roles, there'll be no problem in marriage. Okay. So basically we have love on one side and submission on, on the, the other, other side. side to balance that equation. Yes, sir. Love from the man and then submission, submission from, the woman. from the woman. And Paul used husband and wife relationship as an allegory mm. to explain Christ and the and church, church. relationship. Yes, sir. Now, if love and submission mm. are key factors to successful marriage, yes, sir. why then are we having problems in our marriages? Okay, ladies first. Ladies okay. first. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say why we are having problems in our marriages because after. Oh, they look so simple. Yes, they Very look so simple. simple. But you see, the simplicity of that word submit, mm -hmm. a lot of women misunderstood it. Okay. A lot of women felt submission is stupidity. Mm -hmm. Submission is second citizenship, mm -hmm. which is not. Mm -hmm. Submission is a strength under control. Mm -hmm. And submission is a way of God guiding you as a woman. Because God knows how, you already knew that, a woman, when you are not under a leadership mm -hmm. you can misbehave and there are some things you can be exposed to so mm. it's a way of god you know giving you a kind of a shelter mm. i am giving you a person that is there on head for you with you okay so submission is not some in fact you you should be glad about it mm. because there's no way you want to uh, you want to follow god it might not be easy, and when you don't know what you are going to do, you go back to God. But majority of we women, we just see that submission as an abstract word, as something that is not possible. Okay. So, and the, this new generation men, we have even our forefathers, even our fathers. Mm. No man, no matter how loving he is, mm. we bypass the fault of a woman who doesn't submit. Mm. So, submission as it is, mm. is something that you, you need to learn by the Holy Spirit and train up yourself even to see it. submission is not something that is so difficult to do mm. but you might just know is it that you eat your cake you cannot eat your cake mm. and have it okay on this on this issue of submission we've seen women on practical note mm. who submitted to their husbands and then they met their waterloo how do we interrogate that okay <laughs> let me say there is no, number one, the man is going on the wrong path. Every woman, the Bible says, submit. So she submit, submitted, okay. and followed. Now the whole family is inside the ditch. When mm. the woman said, when the when the Bible says that a wise woman builds a, a house, okay, a home. Now, how are you going to become a wise person? You okay. are not just wise by your age. Mm. You are not just wise by your uh, academic um, uh, qualification. Okay. You are not just wise by <clears throat> by your. Um, your number of years that you have gotten married okay you go back to go for wisdom mm. there is a particular way to handle your husband okay if your husband is making a mistake and you have seen it that doesn't mean that you are not going to submit to him mm. or you just form you, you just by the help of god look for a way to defend you no know, protect yourself the territory the, the dynasty protect yourself and the family even protect the family from his own you know havoc mm. so even if eventually and a good approach will really matter Okay. A good approach. You can, when you see that a man is not reasonable, a man is not thinking straight, a good approach will help you protect yourself and the, and the family. Mm. And yes, this submits. Mm. There are, you know, most times it's not because women are not, you know, they are not doing the right thing. But at times the approach okay. mm. that you will present, okay. you can as well say no to your husband based on, because you know this thing he's doing is wrong. Mm. You can say no mm. to him. If an outsider is looking at it, but you said we should submit to our own. The Bible did not say you should submit to all stupidity. Mm. You submit to all. As at that time, mm. he is your husband. Okay. But in the spiritual sense of it, he has removed himself from that leadership because he's no more leading you right. Mm. So submission, at times you need the wisdom of God and you need a good approach. Mm. When you have a husband that is always, you have a joint account and you know that he's always handling the, the money, and you are still saying submit, submit. You are pouring your salary inside, inside, inside the joint account. Mm -mm. And it's a, going down the drain. No, maybe it's building. 
<laughs> without the wife's knowledge. If it's, if it's, if it's, if it's a money judicial, you know, you'll be able to say, ah, okay. Okay, we, I can understand. So we need, a woman needs wisdom. Okay, okay. Now, uh, Pastor Ojo. Yes, sir. This issue of love, because as a pastor too, when people, when women come, you know, women are the ones that come for counseling the most. Men, we want, men we want don't come. Men really comes. We want a better. Men really come, <laughs> but the women they yeah. come. And when a woman comes and then she tells stories of three hours, mm. at the end of the day, what she's saying is that my husband does not love me. Mm. That I have found out. Mm. This love in the marriage. Pastor, can you help us just define it? Okay. All right. What um, is love exactly in the marriage? What is love in the marriage? Now, uh, let me start with the way we view love differs. Okay. The way a woman understands love okay. is different from the way a man plays love. Mm. Mm. Now, I think there's a book that was talking about um, understanding love language or something like yes, that. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Now, you need to understand what this person's love language is. Is okay. And I feel now... I want to actually bring something out of this. Okay. That um, when you talk about married now, it's not only peculiar to Christianity. Yes, of course. Yeah. They are Muslims, all humans. They are all humans. Yeah. They are idol worshippers that yeah. are married too. So yeah. when we are looking at it in that context, mm. I believe that's why some people read. Mm. You read. Mm. Now, if what I understand as love to me is or what my wife understands as love is buy me gifts. Okay. <laughs> and all I do is I come home, pack, and do all those things. We to her, she will say, you don't love me. Okay. So I feel, to start with, marry someone you understand. Can you really understand at the point of your choice? And that's why there's something called courtship. The number of years you spend in courtship does not let you know a woman or a man totally. Let me share this with you, sir. One year marriage... Cannot met, be compared to man, five years courtship. Uh -huh. I met a man before I got married. Okay. A Muslim. Okay. An elderly man. He called me into his house one day and he said to me, he said, you're about to get married. Okay. He said, this is how to do it. This woman you want to marry, what are the futures that she has? Mm -hmm. The positive mm -hmm. and the negative. Okay. List them out. Okay. She said, please don't focus on the positive because everybody can manage that. Okay. But focus on the negative. Okay. These are the negative vices I've seen in this woman. Mm. Now ask yourself a sincere question. Can I? Can I cope with them? Mm. Before you go into it. There are some men that, their own is not that you are committing adultery. Mm. Simple lie, they can divorce you. That's true. <laughs> some men, I put my cup here. Don't shift it. My they can divorce you. My goodness. Some men, you have used the toothpaste from the middle. You are pressing it from the middle. I don't like that. I want you to press it from the bottom. They can divorce. So, what you want is different from what I want okay. in marriage. But all should still be geared towards the same goal. Okay. Now, in conclusion, I feel some of these little things that we mentioned. A man, for a man to love you, for a woman to love you the way you expect to be loved, you can't give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. Is this person also in love? Okay. With God. Okay. Does he understand the place of love? That Vertical God is love. Yes. And then horizontal. Uh -huh. If he doesn't have that, he can't give you this. Okay. Very, that, this is a very good point because yeah. all of the things that um, you've been mentioning, for me, they sound like indulgence. Mm. My wife loves gifts. So if I buy gifts, she will love me more. She will love me more. Or she believes I love her. Yes, sir. There are instances a man can buy gifts and still not be in love because he understands that the woman likes gifts so I give her and gifts. continue to give her gifts to, to indulge that area and mm. then manipulate if possible. Yes. Now, in the light of Ephesians 5, mm. Paul was talking about Christ and the church. And the church. The love that Christ has for the church is agape. Mm. Agape is not emotional. And it's unconditional. And it's unconditional. Agape mm -hmm. is not about emotion. Now, if I buy a gift for my wife, it means love. The day I am unable to buy gifts, it is interpreted because the woman feels that you don't love me anymore. Is that not indulgence? Okay. Can't she at that point say, okay, this man has been buying gifts. Today he couldn't Let provide gifts. This. Let me take him, let me overlook this, <laughs> which is agape. Of course, women will do that. 
Are you sure? Uh, yes. <laughs> a reasonable Pastor, do you think women will do that? A reasonable woman. <laughs> okay, you, you, you have had just, it. You have had it. You always say a woman will do yeah, that. No. A, a reasonable woman will A reasonable woman, okay? Let me say, a, 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 I don't want to say a Christian woman now. A reasonable woman. A reasonable, a reasonable woman. woman, okay? We'll do that. Okay? We understand. Okay? That, okay, my husband doesn't have the money now. Today. And we'll just let it yeah. go. But also, we must not base our love on material things. Mm. Because times can change, mm. seasons can mm. differ. Okay. And you see, when, when a woman is um, expect that her love, if her husband loves her, is true gift mm -hmm. or true something, hmm, let me say, you may keep servicing that mindset mm. until she are. Or she has another understanding. She has grows that, 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 that level. That level. Mm. So, some, some, I've heard the story of a woman, her husband is not always, have, uh, always available. Okay. And anytime she complains that, hello, sister, you are not at home, she will, he will ask her, I haven't seen the money I sent to your account. Okay. Do, am I depriving you of a good car? Mm. Is there no money in your account? Mm. Then what do you want me at home? What else? <laughs> so maybe I don't know how they started their relationship. Maybe she has already made him to understand or to view to see her as all she wants is money. It's money. Because this is there was, there's there's a lady who also complained this. She said, Pastor, can you imagine? I told my husband, you are always you are not there for me. I complained and complained, and then the way he will reply me is that he bought a car and said, Baby, I bought a car for you. Yeah. See, is that what I'm asking for? I'm asking for your presence. Mm. And you are giving me a car. I said, did you collect the car? Yes, you collect the car. Can you hear that? She can't recall yeah, the noise. You, you don't, don't reject, you don't she want that attention. Even you don't reject realize. gifts from your husband. Yes, you can't reject it. <laughs> no matter what. No matter what. Lack of respect. No, it's not this. Lack of respect. Lack of respect. It's a sin. It's a criminal offense. How will your husband give you a gift and you? And then you reject it. She may be angry at that point. No, sir, let me let me say this. Okay, please go on, Pastor. I think most times what we start with mm. is actually a factor. The foundation yes. of marriage yeah. and relationship. Yeah. But while we move into the marriage, we outgrow some things and we expect the change to, to come instantly. It doesn't. Mm. You know, you mentioned it. Maybe when they started, it mm -hmm. was gifts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and most of our preachers also preach it today. Mm -hmm. He doesn't buy you a gift, he doesn't love you. Mm. That's psychology. Uh -huh. Oh, a man that doesn't do this for you, be sure he won't give you anything when you marry him. Who says that? Mm. Um, even, even our Lord Jesus, even God, mm. he gave his only begotten. Now, no, the question he didn't is, give, the question, he gave the, himself. The, the, the question is this, the question is this, this, this love and giving is given gift a proof of love? It's part of it. To me, it's not. To me, it's part of it. Eh, I'm a woman, so it's part of it. <laughs> okay. It's part of it. But when, it, when women are crying for love and giving, they're actually asking for material. Material. Money and material. Yes. No, sir. That's well, what I hear. Okay, when we cry for love, when we are saying, you don't love me, giving that we are expecting might not even be in uh, materialism, in, in, in physical things. Okay. You can give your time. Oftentimes, when you look around, we see men who men are not even conscious, intentional about this one. I mean, table talk about this myself. Mm, and my let's wife. talk about it. Yeah, okay, yeah. because so the given we are talking mm -hmm. about, we are not talking about money. The modern women. Yes. I, I, the, I, I, the, let me say, I'm also a modern woman. You, well, you're modern, but you are not more. You are not modern like the kind mm -hmm. of woman we're describing. Now, the modern women, your Time mm. is useless when the money when is the there. money is not there. Go out there, make, make the, the money, money and spoil me. Even if it's not, <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Anyhow, it doesn't matter. Are, are you I understand? Are that. you aware that the modern women don't mind their husband being a polygamist? Mm, so far, you can provide for them. So far, they are okay. So, mystery. being broke is a real offense. In the modern marriage, yes, <sighs> especially in the in, in, in the modern in women, the, the modern women, with what is even happening in the country now, and all over the world. So the pressure, no, the no, financial no. pressure, it's not all of them. It's not. We're, we're saying that we, it's, it's, it's a them. global thing. Hey, hey, of course, not, of not the, Yeah, there are still some that are. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, let's let's. I want us to compare marriages 
of the olden days are current mm. marriages. What do you make out of the two? Do you say that today's marriage is better off I'm compared with the past, or the past is better off? Mrs. Oyagbile, your take. <laughs> okay. Sh can we look at the productivity? Okay. Can we look at, um, let's see, okay. In our forefathers' time, okay. Our mothers have a way of um, submitting themselves okay. through the thick and the thin. Okay. They will keep moving okay. just because of the children. Okay. And we can see that not all of the children will end up, you know, being a graduate. Not all of the children will end up, you know, finishing. School. Like, by God's grace, I'm a master's degree holder. Okay. In, in those days, the father will actually do what he can do. And say okay once you finish secondary school or something or once but now because the the mothers now they now have the opportunity to you know go to the what to also make financial, make financial contribution input, and it's even more yeah. so, they can as well join us together to you know to give the children good education okay maybe from um, first degree second degree or whatever okay so i see it in the level of the productivity that this our home it's still better because it helps okay let me say the children they have the academic system of the children or let me say but i want to look at the value and the value and the virtues okay uh <laughs> you know in those in those days mm. when a mother wants to collect something from her husband mm. there's a way they will begin to elogize him mm -hmm. and they will begin to the paparazzi okay. be, because they just want to collect something from the mm. okay Nowadays, do you see anybody chanting or singing praise? Singing anybody's praise? If you know, do I go do now? Hmm. I won't have money more than you. Where a woman has more money than the husband. So in those days, I see the dependency of the women on the okay on the men. Okay. But now, fine. The dependency is not really as of the, the past. Then. Because of the woman too can have one or. But when we look at it critically. Um, let me say it may not be paying the men because the the the, the, the most the, the the need of a man as in the respect the honor maybe let me say they are, they, they were getting it more then than, than, than now. now okay so let me see that's part of the okay difference I see comparing uh, oh. the the marriage of the past and, and the, the modern marriage modern. Then, Okay, Pastor okay. Joe, what do you have to say? Um, let's look at it this way. Okay. Those days. Okay. Our fathers enjoyed life. How? <laughs> you also enjoy life. How? Let me explain. How? Now, you know those days, many of those women were not working. Okay. They were at home dependent on them. So they got the respect they needed. Mm. Now, I would say to an extent, it was still transactional. Okay. Because they felt like some women felt those days, and mm. some of these modern women too will refer you back to those days. Okay. I think I had a, there was a meeting we had somewhere we were talking about something like this, and some of the women stood up. They said, "I want me while you gone by him." Okay. Tony won loan. I want to loan at a So that is like a reaction. Okay. Okay. So they didn't see those marriages then as successful. Okay. They saw them as. They didn't have a choice. Mm. That's why those women stayed back. Okay. But now I'm bringing it back to the place of the scripture. Mm. We have lost what the real essence of marriage. Okay. I'm not supposed to provide for you just because I want to lord my leadership on mm. you. You are not supposed to submit to me just because you want to collect money from me. Mm. You understand? Just because you want me to give you money. It so is as unto, unto the Lord. As Lord. I love as Christ. Unto, uh -huh. I submit to my husband as unto the so Lord. you are submitting to your husband and seeing that i'm submitting to christ mm. your head that's a better understanding that's a better understanding okay pastor we'll come back after a short break right. now and then we'll, we'll take our discussion come from ahead. this very point okay. our viewers i uh, believe that you've been getting blessed with this uh, conversation please stay tuned we'll be right back again god bless you
Elias Olayinka Herbert Macaulay, politician, nationalist and journalist, was the first Nigerian to qualify as a civil engineer, surveyor and architect. Born on November 14, 1864, Herbert Macaulay was the founder of Nigeria's National Democratic Party, the first political party in pre-independent Nigeria. Scholars of Nigeria's political history describe Herbert Macaulay as the intellectual bulldog of 19th century Nigerian nationalist movement. In the deference to his qualities as founder and leader of two foremost political parties, Nigeria National Democratic Party NNDP and the National Council of Nigerian Citizens NCNC. His matchless versatility in the party organization and control kept the British colonialists on their toes in the entire span of his active life. After his death on 7th May 1946, Herbert Macaulay remains a hero of his country which recognized his anti-colonial struggles. Today, Nigeria's 10 Naira coin bears his oval face and trademark moustache. Western Springer Television identifies Herbert Macaulay as a major character in history. Fumilayo Ransom Kuti was an educationist and advocate of women's rights. She was recognized for her vitriolic comments against colonial policy of taxation as it affected the Nigerian women. Bere, as fondly addressed by her women followers, Fumilayo championed the initiation of universal adult suffrage, which gave an unprecedented leeway for women to contest elective offices and power to exercise voting rights. Married to a foremost educationist and teacher, Israel Oladotun Ransom Kuti, the first president of Nigeria Union of Teachers, Fumilayo Ransom Kuti was the mother of children who inherited her spirit of activism. Olufela and Be Ololari, the former, a renowned musical legend. She was the first female student of Abe Okuta Grammar School and the first female to own and drive a car in Nigeria. The award recipient of Member of Order of Nigeria MON and Lenin Peace Prize was born on 25th October 1900 and was killed on the 13th April 1978 by rampaging road soldiers in Lagos. Western Spring Television identifies Fumilayo Ransom Kuti as a watershed character in history. Welcome back from that short break. This is Issues in Christendom. And today we've been looking at the topic um, 21st century marriage. Uh, and then we'll have, um, we've been having a very beautiful conversation this afternoon. Before we went on that short break, Pastor Joe was talking about um, co comparing the marriages of the past with the modern marriage. And you made a very striking statement. Yes, sir that a man's provision for the family is not a a reason for him a grant for him to load it on the wife mm. and that the woman's submission is also not a grant for her to collect from the husband from the husband it All is right. as unto the, the law it's not about my spouse it's about actually submitting to Christ's ordinance of marriage. Mm. Now, that scripture, uh, uh, Ephesians 5, that you quoted. Yes, sir. Before Paul began to talk about wives, submit to your husband. Husband, love your wives. In verse 21, yes. he said, submit yourselves one to, to another, another. Mm. in Christ. Okay. That's the starting point. Okay. Now, on that scripture. Yes, please. I actually did a study on it. Oh, please go ahead. I discovered that the real issue of marriage mm. according to paul started from that 22. Mm. if you have bibles that they will put maybe um headings, headings mm. you will see that the real mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. now is starting from that 22 okay. not 21. okay now again english marriage is between two people yeah it should be each other 
Mm -hmm. And we are saying one another mm -hmm. is more than two people. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't talking to husband and wife. Day. Okay. Submitting yourself. So people quote it a lot. Submitting yourself one to another. Submitting. Mm -hmm. Well, the principle that either man or woman. woman before I can deliver successfully in my marriage, yes. I need to submit to Christ first. Yes. That's the principle. Yes. The husband. Which, both the husband and the wife. I, the husband submitting to Christ's leadership. Yes. The woman to submitting to Christ. Now, when we now come inside marriage. Okay. Uh, Before marriage, what you said. Yeah. Okay. Inside marriage. Okay. With the background of my submission to the authority of Christ, both as a man and a woman, mm -hmm. I can fulfill my unique role in, in the, the marriage. marriage. That's correct. Without any problem. That's, That's correct. That's so. Is that not so? Yeah. That's how it ought to be. Yeah, ought to be. Uh, uh, That's not what we are. we're discussing key issues in Christendom, mm. and the Bible is our reference That's book here, yeah, not psychology. Yes, sir. Okay, so we've been able to see marriages of the past and then marriage of today now today's marriage seems to have a lot of crisis mm, that's true sir. to me it looks like the crisis is even bigger than the past marriages now there's an accusation on our african men of patriarchy <laughs> Abi, yes, of the past yes sir. today we have feminism mm. matching patriarchy is that not so? Mm. Mm -hmm. You're correct, sir. Pastor Ojo, mm. Mr. Agbele. Yes. <laughs> Why, what is the fundamental root of the crisis in the modern marriages? Because as it, because um, Dr. Wally is not here today. He's a psychiatrist, a consultant in psychiatry. He has mentioned the times without number that a good number of depression mm. in the women are due to marital stress. In the women. Okay. Yes. You know, men won't speak up. Mm -hmm. They are dying slowly. And Until one day, will just pack. It's still mm -hmm. marital stress. Yeah. But he will not open his mouth to, to say it. But the women are crying out. Mm. Men too are depressed. That's true. So what's the fundamental root of the, mm. cri of the multiplicity of the crisis in the modern marriages? Mr. Agbele. Hmm. Okay, let me talk as a woman now. Yes, go ahead. In every marriage, let me say, for every man or woman you marry, there will always be um, something that you will not be able to control. Some women don't lie to them. Okay. Once you lie, you are an arm robber. Mm. You are an, in, as in, she's already seen you in another mm, light. And most times, it is what a woman doesn't like or what your husband doesn't like that you do so once we keep you know taking the um the interest of the other partner with levity we will keep having marital crisis and let me also point that's out, insensitivity mm, yeah to the needs of my spouse mm. when we are not sensitive to the needs of our spouse you see you see some couples who say this has been going on for 10 years why okay not all marital issues are spiritual mm. Some are our, as in, an intentional habit that we do. Your wife has been complaining to you that you come home late, and I don't like it. I'm always, once it's 8 p.m., my BP is always rising because mm -hmm. I don't know where you are. You are not a journalist. Okay. You are not a paramilitary. Okay. As in, you, you, you know. I'm not a doctor. You're not a doctor. That's what I did. That's Even if you're a doctor, <laughs> you're not on call every <laughs> night. And, 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 and we, see, we, we see you, you are climbing pulpit on Sunday. You'll be talking, discharging, you know. So this a bit gradually, and the, why, why we'll be complaining is it's over 10 years. Then why is our husband not changing? Okay. And you see some mm -hmm. husband will be saying, my wife can, if she tells me she's going to the market, go and search all the markets. You won't find that there. <laughs> she's already at the lorry. Mm, at the so friend's house. If, no, we don't. Let's stop um, putting blame on the devil. Okay. Let's face Character. it. Flaws. Character flaws. How about and the place? Yeah. How about the place of coping? Coping, mm -hmm. sir. What do you mean coping? Sir? Coping with some habit. Okay, okay, okay. Are all characters unforgivable? Mm. Do we sometimes need to also 
how to grow some expectations mm. and then cope that this my husband or my wife is like this as long as it is not harmful to me to me and the family at mm. large okay so let me say if you want to talk about coping okay women will you know naturally cope with some things let me say that mm. women will naturally cope with some things but every woman has a boundary has an elastic limit okay for you know and one of the reasons why this thing is becoming um you know is persistent persistent is because of too much expectation too high expectation okay from women okay from the, to their husbands okay so the only thing we can do is if you know your wife as your spouse has been complaining about this okay try to sit yourself down and look at how you can change. Okay. I think the change <clears throat> level, okay. the change system okay. is what we don't want to go through. Okay, fine. We want to impose it on our spouse okay. to cope. Okay, now I'm gonna come back to Pastor Ojo. Um women are the ones who complain the most in marriage. Mm. We are the receiving hand. There are instances where the man too okay. is going through a lot mm. from the wife. Yes. Without mm. complaining. Mm. He finds a way to cope with the wife. Mm. As a pastor, I've seen where a man drove his wife to my house. Himself? Himself. Okay. He didn't tell the wife that he we was were going to, to my house. He brought her and he opened up some issues. Say, look at this woman. Mm. She's waiting for the day a girl will come and knock on this door that she's pregnant for me. She know they allow me mm. for sex, and it's been a an issue, long term issue, mm. and the woman is not seeing it as an issue. And the man said, "That's the way I am coping. Maybe she will listen to you, because I see that she's close to you." Mm. Eh? The man has to dream. The woman has to dream <laughs> before she could allow sex. That's a level of spirituality. Mm. Oh, no, no. Has to have a dream. dream that she was led and instructed, <laughs> and the man is still coping. <laughs> and maybe uh, it's one out of a million or one, one out of a hundred. That the man even spoke out is not is also unlike men. Yes. Men don't speak out; they will just move on. But you know, I understand that women can't move on to talk. Even when the woman is coping, she's nagging along with the coping. That's true. But you have made a very important point that the will to change when our spouse are making certain um, requests. But I want to appeal to the women that while you are also making appeal, can you flip it around? Are there things I'm also doing to hurt this man that he has even stopped talking about because mm. he doesn't want crisis in the he marriage. Because I've also found, let's be realistic, that if a woman offend you, you'll be the one to beg at last. You beg. If you offend her, you'll be the you one beg. to beg. But if you not, raise not issue, in all homes. Yeah. If you want but a issue, good number, a good num <laughs> please, a good number, let's be realistic, a good number of homes, eh? mm. men have kept quiet because every time, he, if he raises an issue of not submitting, she carries the issue of uh, how much are you, are, you, are you even providing the family? She will use that one to puncture his own ego. Ego. This is modern issues. Yes, because some women want to be paid for their submission. They want to be paid for it. So, Pastor, we so, have seen men who complain that before I have sex with my wife, I have to pay. Christian home. Mm. That's not a Christian home. <laughs> Pastor, your take. Pastor. Okay, um, let me say this. You see, what we practice nowadays is not a biblical form of marriage. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, I said it's transactional. Mm -hmm. A woman, now, he said something about asking for money before sex. Now, some may not ask before, mm -hmm. but while you're at it, <laughs> they remind you of Certain. It, adjust it has a reason. <laughs> yes, I need to talk here. Okay, please go it on. It has a reason. Okay. If you as a man mm. can as well provide or do whatever you're supposed to do without sex, no problem. But there are some men. The, 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 the men, he has already put the, the mindset 
I'm giving squeeze the woman to the extent that she does not have any other means than to ask the request when you're on bed because the man will not do it otherwise. So to me, I don't see it as a sin. If you know your husband will be able to do whatever you want to do. Do you think a promise made during that act is actually it's a genuine actually promise? Really it's not. It's not. Some men are. It's, it's, under, it's under duress. It's under duress. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's, silent, silent, under duress. That's, that's, a, that's an offense. My pastor, <laughs> yes. you can call it. Um, uh, uh, is it a manipulation? It's not manipulation. Oh, God. <laughs> no, let, let's listen to what our mothers used to do. Taking money day. under duress. No, it's not taking, <laughs> that's, that's it's not taking money under duress. Sir. Let's look at what our mothers used to do then. Okay. No, no, I don't know the oriki of my husband. Okay. But it was, I uh, know, ah, uh, uh, let this, me say, this. Akonde. Okay, let me say, ah, Akonde, Omo, Kiniko, Kiniko, uh -huh. begin, and the head will begin to sway. Like you are out of And they will do things. And they will do, they will do things. Now, ma, just hold on, please. That act uh -huh. is actually a godly act. Okay. When you start with God and you start chanting his so phrase, the, does he not he do this? That's not a godly heart. No, no, no. no. You said chanting. Praising. No, I'm praising him. Now, Pastor Debe gave us some examples, uh, an example some years back. He said, when he was growing up, he discovered that his mother yeah, would yeah, go yeah, to yeah, the father. Yeah, yeah. he logized him. father killed uh, 20 yeah. elephants. Exactly. We're not sure he killed one rat. Exactly. But your father killed, and the man would say, kill your friend. What do you want? I know you want something. That's godly. God does that. When you see all these people that worship God, when they come and they start chanting and do you not know do mm -hmm. things, you see it happen. To create an environment mm -hmm. for requests. So why, why, why are we removing that praise level from the sex level? No, sex is not praise. Eh? Sex is your enjoyment. <laughs> you, no. know, you know, when it comes to the praise, mm. you are giving it to the man. To the man. When it comes to the sex, both of you are enjoying it. Yes. Who says who? No, that's what sex is supposed to be now. It's supposed to be enjoyed Sex in the marriage is called love making. I understand. Yes. I understand, but if a... You know, because a woman a, a woman is using this aspect of love making to, to get something from the husband. Is, is it? Not right. You think it's not right? Okay, it's just like, okay. For example, let me give you an example. This is what you are trying to say. A woman comes to you now to say, ah, school is resuming next week. These children's school fees, and the man says, in Katimuni Kuche from last year to she on Tobashi Is that right? That's the same thing. For my me, pastor cannot, for, cannot, for, cannot say this. For, no, you can't talk. Some okay. men will not. If you don't give your wife maybe the money or you don't take on your responsibility as a husband, then the woman will look for a means to, get to pacify you. No, pacify is different. It's the same thing. I mean, uh, please, it is important. It, 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 we, are, we may need to interrogate this issue of using sex as a weapon. As a weapon. I am not saying using sex as a weapon. That's what happens there. No. I'm not saying using sex as a weapon. But even it might not even be uh, it might not be even be sex in, in that aspect. Mm. You know, there are some men that it is only on the bed that they are reasonable. That they are reasonable. <laughs> That's still on that dress. Okay, yeah, I, 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 I think so we dress. need a part two of you this conversation. <laughs> but is it not even better for a woman to pacify her husband in any way? A woman can just put the, uh, the head of her husband on her lap. If, if, why are we please, talking please, about sex as if, if, if she uses sex as a weapon to get a request, I don't grant. want to. I don't want to. That's what it. That's what it means. To that sex as a weapon, sir. Now, if she uses a and her character okay, sir, did not the, change, there's no other word that is not weapon. Maybe so, the weapon is a problem. So that some women will not be thinking, oh, I can close border. If she, if you just, don't want, what is happening? I don't want us to use it. What is happening? I don't want us to use it. As, I don't okay. want us to use it. As okay, we need to go now. We need to go now because uh, <laughs> our right. time is really fast spent. <laughs> but uh, um, from the powerhouse, I'm sure they are also enjoying this topic, and then they are also demanding for a part two of this conversation. <laughs> now, let me take parting message from Pastor. Okay. Ocho. Um, this is my advice. Okay. To everyone listening watch and watching, learn to know God mm. first. Mm. Love God. Okay. Then love your husband. Mm. Um, I said something in church today that when, before you get married, your boss will say, Oh, Bernie, let's not use Obernie now. <coughs> so that it's not like you are attacking. Okay. Obernie, you are That's true. You don't bring, use an Egyptian weapon in Goshen. It won't work. Mm. We are Christians. There's a way we do our things. Mm. So
So you don't go and import what the social media is teaching you, or what the outside world is teaching you, and come to use it at in the kingdom. In the kingdom. Mm. I have a friend. He used to drink. Mm. In fact, those days he used to come home late. Mm. There was a day his dad said I should talk to him. Did he, he maybe he used to come like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Okay. And I spoke to him. That day I spoke to him, he came home 1 a.m. <laughs> so when I told the dad, he said, Motiba, well, sorry, my boss or mom. <laughs> so now the wife, the wife had that problem with him. They were always fighting. Mm. But a point came, I don't know if it was the only ghost that took over that lady, I don't know. Mm. She stopped talking. Mm. She stopped talking. She was going to church, they would go together. She would pull him behind the church, that was Sunday. Mm. You see this boy in church, he doesn't listen to any other thing, but when they go and stand to praise and worship God, he will dance as dance. if he's the only one in the church. Wow. As we speak today, mm. that guy doesn't come home late again. Mm. She didn't use sex as a weapon. She didn't use denial of food she as a weapon. She used wisdom. She used wisdom. In, uh, emotional intelligence. We can do the oh. same and our homes will change. Awesome. Thank you so much, Pastor Ojo. Mrs. Oyagbele, your parting message. Okay, what I would just advise is that every woman should learn to know our God. Mm. Okay. Because your husband may not be available 24 mm. 7. Mm. And whatever need you have, mm. you don't need to put pressure on your husband. Mm. Wait for him till he is able to also grow. Because whatever you see your husband do now, don't expect a magic mm. to happen. Mm. So wait for growth in your home. Exactly. And trust God. Mm. He's the rewarder of every sacrifice. Amen. And everything you have sown in your marriage will be compensated. Amen. Thank you so much, Mr. Agbile. Thank you. Pastor Ojo, thank you thank for you, coming on board. We appreciate you. God thank bless you. So much, you. Our viewers, thank you so much for being a part of this beautiful conversation. I believe that we have been blessed. And I will see you again next week, Sunday, for another wonderful time. I remain yours, Pastor Steve Akinwumi. Bye for now.